Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Kat here. Ever get the feeling you're being lied to? The truth is hidden. You're not sure what's going on, but you know things aren't right, but you don't know where to start? Well, you're in the right spot. Because we are going to look at conspiracies, intrigue, and scandal here of all kinds. And God knows there's enough of it to go around. It's entertainment only, but you might find some nuggets of truth in there that you want to pursue. And it's a great jumping off point. I urge everybody to do their own research. Hopefully you uh, have a lot of fun, same as me, and we get something out of this. You've got to excuse the ring lights in my eyes there. I've just got my little setup going. This is my first video. And I hope I've got everything right. But of course, adjustments need, need to be made. Be gentle with me. This is my first time. All right, as far as scandal, conspiracy theories, and intrigue go, there's no better place to start than the royal family. They're just rife with stories of all sorts going back centuries. And we're going to look at one aspect of that today. Hence, I'm going to call this who's your daddy now the most common i guess one that we've all heard as far as sketchy parenting parentage goes is prince harry lots of speculation there for many many years and i think it's going to continue till the end of time i don't think we're ever going to know that the most common um speculative theory is that Major James Hewitt is Prince Harry's father. Now, hang on, I just got to grab my notes. Major James Hewitt had an affair with Diana. Everybody knows that. She, in fact, admitted it. It's the only one of her affairs that she has admitted to uh, was her affair with Major James Hewitt. Now, they, according to the official story, um... They had an affair for five years, from 1986 to 1991. This is what most people, royal reporters, etc., will tell you and say, well, that doesn't fit. Harry can't be the father because Harry was born September, 8, September 15th, sorry, 1984. So it doesn't fit, even though it doesn't fit. It's still the most popular theory. But other information has come out in Major James Hewitt's book. Actually, he's written several and at least two on Princess Diana, notably Princess in Love. That was his first book about his affair with Diana. And in that book, uh, he states that they actually knew each other prior to um, 1986, in fact, a couple of years before. Doesn't go into a whole lot of detail of whether that was an intimate uh, relationship or just an acquaintance. He worked at the palace, at Buckingham Palace, so they could have run into each other. We don't know how deep that goes. But there's also, um, a few years ago, uh, his publicist, who is kind of a, I've got his name here somewhere, let me try to find it. His, his publicist wrote a book, and about several stars, it was a real, you know, Hollywood kind of a thing. Not Hollywood, act, British uh, stars and that kind of thing, British celebrities, and Major James Hewitt was one of the people in there that he, uh, spoke about, and he was acting as his publish publicist at the time. He claims that James Hewitt told him that they had had this uh, relationship prior to the official story. Major James Hewitt did not claim that he was Harry's father, so we still don't know. But there is that window in there that perhaps they were together a lot longer than everybody thinks. 
So, you know, that one, James Hewitt has dined out on his affair with Diana for decades. Lots and lots of royal reporters and investigators and freelance journalists have made lots of money. Tons of books have been written, and I don't think that's ever going to end. Doesn't get us any closer to the truth. But now there's an even more compelling story, and I don't think it's widely known, but it's very interesting. As far as its veracity, who knows? It sounds pretty outlandish. But the consequences of this uh, whole situation are quite interesting, the aftermath of it all, which um, leads to its compelling nature. Now... Uh, in 2014, a young, a 30-year-old aristocratic man published a book. His name is G uh, Ale Mr. Alexander. His full name is James Francis Alexander, aristocratic 30-year-old, wrote a book called The Real Prince Harry, The Truth Behind the Royal Lies, and it was published in Britain. Now, he is the son of an aristocrat, Charles James Alexander. I believe is his name, and he is an aristocrat, has a big estate in Lincolnshire, Lord, Ed Lord Edward James Alexander is his father's name. I think he's dead now, I think he died of a heart attack a few years ago, but had a big place in Lincolnshire anyway. The, the guy, the young guy, um, the young Alexander there writes this book, Francis James, France, James Francis Alexander writes this book, and uh, what he claims is that uh, he is the real son of Princess Diana saying he was replaced by a look-alike at the Queen's insistent when he was eight years old, after he threatened to reveal Prince Charles was not his father. Right away there, you're kind of wondering, at eight years old, well, yeah, he was in school at the time. Those rumors were floating around by that time. He may have heard, he may have known. Could have somebody told him? How would he have known? We don't know. That's all speculation on this part. But he goes on to say in the book that he was woke up at night by his father's butler and driven to Lincolnshire, where he was exchanged with the son of Lord Edward James Alexander. Now, in the first week this book came out in 2014, 50,000 copies of the book were sold in England. But by the end of that week, the publisher pulled the book off the shelves. Never to be seen. It disappeared from the bookstores. Now, he accused the royals of putting pressure on the publisher to squash the book. Um, there is evidence of him and Charles actually meeting. And we have Charles' reaction to the whole thing as well. There's pictures online. If you look up James Franc Francis James Alexander, you can see the pictures. If you Google the name of the book, you can get some of the information. It is out there on the public domain. There's not a lot. There's a couple of pictures of the guy. He... You know, he's a redhead, he's about Harry's build, could be, who knows. They're not the clearest of pictures. I really, I couldn't find a lot, but I found a bit, and that's kind of, you know, that's kind of interesting in itself. 
Now in 2014 at the London Book Fair, there are photographs, I think I got them from the Daily Mail archives. You'll be able to find it if you look it up. Uh, there's a picture of him in the frame with Prince Charles. They, I guess, you know, it's a big, big deal. Prince Charles would have been there. Uh, maybe James Alexander knew that he was going to be there, and so he showed up as well. Not sure if it was a confrontation that he initiated, or they just happened to bump into each other, which I kind of doubt, given the circumstances. But apparently, uh, Charles' reaction to him was, you know, you're, you're, you're a little bastard, leave me alone, and leave my family alone. So Charles was well aware of the book, well aware of the claims, and did not like it, and had an opportunity to say that to Francis James Alexander in person. Now, what goes on after that, subsequent to that, uh, James, who's British, was living in England, um, claims that he was getting a lot of harassment from MI5. And, you know, conspiracy theory, strap on the royal the foil hat. Um, the MI5 is involved in everything, and we know it, and they're behind everything. You know, this is playing devil's advocate here. But they have been known to do some very shady things, and as far as the royal family comes to mind, MI5 is basically their... Uh, their protection team, their their number one agenda is to control things around the royal family. You know. So he claims they were harassing him. Also, he was getting death threats and things like this, and he felt unsafe. So he moved to Ireland subsequently for two, three years. He was in Ireland, and at the time in 2017, according to sources close to him. Uh, they claim that he was in contact with, I believe, the British consulate and government officials trying to come back to England, I don't know, find a safe haven. He was trying to sort things out, didn't want to be in Ireland anymore. He was worried about his safety. He was apparently in meetings to try to sort this all out. Well, as it happens, during this time, just days after one of these meetings with officials, um, Francis James Alexander, 31 years old, was found dead in his hotel room in a little town in Ireland. And he wasn't, there was no question that it was, was it an overdose? Was it this or that? He had 20 gunshots. He'd been dead for a couple of days. Apparently somebody had, you know, complained about the smell. They went and looked, found him dead. 20 gunshots. And the article about finding him dead and about all this is can be found in the Daily Mail archives. If you even, you know, Google his name, Google Ireland, he was shot, the article will come up. And there's quotes in there by the police sergeant, um, you know, saying what state the body was found in. And yeah, it's definitely not a suicide. And I just find it kind of interesting on a lot of levels, because here's a guy who was an aristocrat, lots of money, big estate, 30, 31 years old, looking to inherit a lot of money, a lot of wealth in a big estate. Why would he, unless he was stark raving crazy, why would he come out with a story like this and jeopardize his future? You know, He's got everything. He's got the world at the feet. He's an aristocratic Brit. He's got it all going on. Why would he jeopardize all of that 
to come up with a harebrained story that he's the real Prince Harry, was switched at eight years old. I mean, that's quite something. Why would somebody risk it all for something like that, you know? But then again, you're stuck. If he's the real Prince Harry, and the Prince Harry we've got that's going off the rails now is Francis James Alexander, I mean, you got to look at it in a, in a kind of, let's just stretch this one out for all it's worth. Everything that Harry and Meghan are doing now, seems they want to almost pull down the monarchy. I mean, they're act, acting contrary to everything as royals that they should be. He's showing no respect to his family. You know, just give me the money and and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hear about it. I'm, I'm doing things my way. Megan and I, we're over here, we're doing our thing and you can't stop us. And it doesn't matter what you think and it doesn't matter how we act. And I mean, that's what it looks like. They're getting away with everything and everybody that follows them is saying, why is the queen letting this happen? Why aren't they stripped of their titles? Why are they still getting money? Why is there even a question about paying for his security? And Harry and Meghan are holding that over them like a, like a threat. If we don't get what we want, we'll never come to Britain. We'll never see you again. And we're going to sue everybody that gets in our path. Well, stretch again. If Harry is the real James Francis Alexander and he was switched at birth, or not at birth, sorry, at eight years old, he'd have perhaps a big chip on his shoulder. And he's the holder of some pretty big secrets. I mean, if, if the real Harry knew at eight years old that Charles was not his father, James knows it too. Francis James Alexander know, knew it too. So, you know, is that it? Does he have a big secret that he's holding over the royal family? Big enough that he can compel them to do what he wants and get what he wants and play the game the way he wants and to hell with the reputation of the royal family or what the people think or anything else. Could it be that Prince Harry really isn't Prince Harry? That's an interesting one to ponder. Everything I've talked about today can be found online. This is entertainment only. We'll never know the answer to this one. But it is kind of compelling considering the kind of tenor of the royal family right now and what's going on and how Harry has just, you know, balls of fire figures he can do whatever he wants. Maybe it is because he knows too much. Have a great day, everybody.